All right, hey, organic chemistry. So the best way to make sure you could understand how to identify chirality, chiral molecules, or stereocenters is through practice. So I'm gonna go through these three examples to kind of show you and help you identify how you could figure out I have a chiral carbon or a stereocenter. Now, to remind you, a chiral carbon or a stereocenter is a carbon that has four different things attached to it, okay? Um, it could be a nitrogen that has four different things too. That'll be called a stereocenter. But if I'm talking about a, um, a chiral carbon, I'm looking at my carbons. So I'm going to look at this first one, okay? And so I'm going to look for carbons. And like a nice little hint is if a carbon has one hydrogen, that's a nice hint for a stereocenter that has four different groups. So if I look at CH3, this CH3 has three hydrogens. That's three of the same group. That's not a stereocenter. If I look at this carbon, remember, one, two, three, four. There are two hydrogens there, not a stereocenter. Same thing for this carbon. This has two hydrogens, not a stereocenter. Ah, this carbon only has one hydrogen. There's a potential for it to be a stereocenter. This carbon has three hydrogens, not a stereocenter. So I'm going to look at this carbon. Does it have four different things attached to it? Well, there's a chlorine. There's this methyl group, or CH3 on the left side. There's a hydrogen. And there's this whole big thing, which I'm going to say is the fourth thing. This is a stereocenter. Or the chiral carbon. This is my chiral carbon. There are four things attached to it. Okay, now let's look at something on the ring. Okay, again, a nice hint is if a carbon has one hydrogen. I'm going to let you know that these four carbons, they have two hydrogens. Not going to be stereocenters. Nope. It is not possible to be chiral and have two hydrogens. All right, so now I'm going to look at this carbon. This carbon has one hydrogen, and this carbon has one hydrogen. Are there four different groups? Now on a ring, you kind of look like, you, you kind of go to half the ring, all right? So for four different things, there's a hydrogen, right? So that's one. There's a chlorine, that's two. There is this set of carbons this way, right? So th this is connected to this set of carbons that's on the ring, and then it's connected to this set of carbons this way, Right, so if I kind of do like half here, half here, this half is not the same as this half. Right, there's a CH3 here. So it is not symmetrical. This side of the ring is going to be a different group than this side of the ring. This is definitely a chiral carbon. And so, so that's another kind of input or rule with rings. If, the, if it's not a symmetrical ring, or if the left side doesn't look like the right side, it's not going to be... It's going to be chiral. An ex a non-example is if I had Cl up and then Cl up. This has an internal mirror plane. This is not chiral. And it's not going to have, there are no chiral carbons. If I were to look at this carbon, I would say, oh, there's one hydrogen, but the right side of the ring is the same as the left side of the ring. They both end at this chlorine that's going up. This is not symmetrical. And then I'm going to also say that this carbon that is attached to the CH3, that's also going to be a chiral carbon. It's got a hydrogen. It's got the CH3. It's got this side of the ring, and it's got that side of the ring, and they're not the same. And then again, I wanted to do more examples with rings. Let's see if I could find my one hydrogen carbons. These are already put in. These carbons that I'm putting dots here for have two hydrogens. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. So these are not going to be chiral. These carbons that have more than one hydrogen do not have four different things or four different groups. Not going to be chiral. Let's look at this carbon. Okay, it's got a CH3 up and an H down, All right? So I got one, two, it's got this side of the ring, and then it's got this side of the ring. 
This is not symmetrical. If this was a CH3, this would be symmetrical, and that would not be chiral anymore. So this is not symmetrical. This is a chiral carbon. And there are four different groups. There's one, two, three, four. You could split a ring in half like that. Same thing for this carbon. This has no hydrogens, actually. So I got a Cl, which is one group. CH3, which is the second group. We got this side of the ring, which has a CH3. This side of the ring, which has an H. It's not symmetrical. Three, four. These two are going to be my chiral carbons. And then looking at this last one, it says, are the following compounds the same compound or different compound? Explain. All right, so now it's asking if it's the same compound, not an isomer of any sort, or if it's a different compound, different molecular formula, or an isomer. And now we've learned about some isomers. We've got constitutional isomers or stereoisomers. All of these, if we have mirror images of them, because they have chiral carbons, their mirror images will cause them to have be stereoisomers, and we call those enantiomers. So let's look at this. These two are actually mirror images of each other. And another nice thing is that this carbon here is chiral. So if you have mirror images of two things, and you have this chiral carbon, these two are going to be stereoisomers. They will be non-superimposable mirror images. If I have mirror images, and you could make model sets, and we will talk through a little bit more in class about having model sets. These two, if I were to switch this and put this around, I would not be able to have one on top of the other. Even though these H's look like they're both coming out this way, this, this H is coming out this way with the longer N. This H is coming out this way with the shorter N. These two are not going to line up on each other. So a nice little hint is if I have chiral carbon, and they're both mirror images, these are going to be known as stereoisomers. Soon we're going to have some notes where we do kind of like a flow chart to be able to identify that. Okay, so to quickly recap, to find your chiral carbons, you have to look for a carbon that has four different things attached to it. We did a couple of examples with rings. To help you with rings, rings look for any symmetry. If there is any symmetry, it's not going to have any chiral carbons. It's not going to be a chiral molecule. So for example, this would be not chiral. If I had a ring that looked like this, if I had like CH3 and then an H going down, CH3 and then an H going down, this literally can be cut right down the middle, and it looks the same top and bottom. It also looks the same this way. This is symmetrical all around, so I'm not going to have... These carbons are not going to be chiral. If I go this way, it's going to be the same as if I go this way. All right, so not chiral. Okay? All right, so hopefully this quick check review is a bit helpful to get you to the idea of how to do things. What I really want you to know how to do, and write this on the back is if I see a straight chain and something like a halogen on a carbon, find your carbon with one hydrogen, especially for us in high school, Argo in high school, find your carbon with one hydrogen, most likely a stereocenter. Or we also call that same thing as a chiral carbon. So this is an example. This has a hydrogen here. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this whole thing is four different groups attached to it. I could do another one where I do something as simple as 
having a BR and I'm saying it's up in the front. This is 2-bromobutane. Now, remember the rules of carbons. Carbon needs four things. So if I have a bromine coming at me or, or with a wedge, I'm going to have a hydrogen with a dash. Don't forget that. So this thing has four things. One, two, this thing is three, this thing is four. If I were to just draw this carbon kind of blown out a bit to show the four different groups, there is a bromine, there is a hydrogen, there is kind of an ethyl group, so it looks like CH2, CH3, and there's a methyl group. These are four different things, and I'll number them the way I did here. One, and I have two, and I numbered this three, and then I numbered this four. Four different things. I could rewrite this. I have one, two, three, four carbons is my longest chain. It's going to look like that. Remember, this is butane. And on my second carbon, I have my bromine. Okay? So make sure you get the idea of how to identify stereocenters. It's going to be very important to do them like this on the back. So this is going to be helpful notes and a little bit more practice for you. We will do a bit more practice and we will have notes on identifying chiral carbons and then eventually we will use that word enantiomer again. All right. After this, we should be doing some notes together in class. So make sure that you get this idea and ask any questions or concerns that you have.